Well, hello. This is our first opportunity to get up close and personal with the 2022 Kia Sportage, the fifth generation version of the Korean brand's mid-sized SUV. Now, we can't drive it today because this car doesn't actually go on sale for another couple of months or so, but we can explore some other details. So let's go. This is a hugely important model for Kia. It's going into the heavily congested mid-size SUV segment. It's got to take on the likes of the Toyota RAV4, Subaru Forester, Mazda CX-5, and of course its cousin, the Hyundai Tucson. And like the new Tucson that's also just come out, a very bold new look for the Sportage. Particularly these boomerang daytime running lights here, LEDs, really remind me of that Maserati 3200 GT from the late 1990s. Very striking, distinctive design, love it. It. In fact, it's more distinctive even than the front grille, which is usually the focal point of Kia designs these days. Something for this car as well, a whole range of new optional colours, and that includes this jungle wood green. Very nice colour. Green, very on trend, of course, at the moment. And I don't mind that because green is my favourite colour. This is a top-of-the-range GT line Sportage. Comes with extras such as 19-inch machined alloy wheels very dramatic looking, a bit like the front end. Other models lower down, they get wheel sizes ranging from 17 inches to 19 inches. Different rim designs though. Coming along to the side, now I think you might even be able to tell visually that this car looks a bit longer than the old Sportage. 16 and a half centimetres change in the length between generations. Eight and a half centimetres of that in the wheelbase, the gap between the front and rear wheels. Side glass, Nice and shallow, it helps give this car really nice proportions and almost a teardrop design. Very stylish, actually compared with the Tucson, something else to add. Tucson, it's got these really heavy creases down the side of the car, very fussy, lot cleaner on the Sportage and I think that's a better look. Let's take a look at the back, very clean look again here, very smart. Tail lights joined across the back, very on trend feature again. The tail lights, Kia calls these razor tail lights because they're supposed to be very sharp looking, cutting into the car. Not a bad look. And something else I think looks pretty sharp the new Kia logo. Now, outgoing Sportage had a boot capacity of about 466 litres. Not anything special, really quite average for the segment. Here, this is much better. Now, Kia Australia hasn't given us official specs for the boot capacity just yet, but we're expecting more than 600 litres. So that will make the Sportage much more competitive with the likes of CRV, Forester, Tiguan, which have particularly big boots. Still, full size spare under the floor as well, which is really good. And some more practical touches than we've had in the Sportage and before. We've got remote release levers for the seat backs. That's in from everything but the base model. That's good. 60-40 split fold rear seats. Not the optimum 40-20-40, but still useful for families. We've got some tied downs. We've got some integrated hooks and a 12 volt socket. Excellent. Okay, welcome to the interior of the fifth generation Sportage. And um, hey, wow, this is um, quite a good new look. The old Sportage, it looked all right inside, but still very mainstream. This, like the larger Sorento SUV from Kia, it's got much more upmarket, looks a lot more sophisticated, particularly this new curved 12 inch by 12 inch display ahead of us here, which includes the infotainment touchscreen and a fully digital driver display. Very stylish. And that curve, well, it's quite appropriate really that it comes from Kia because it was Korean brands, the LG and Samsung electronics companies that a few years ago were the first to come out with curved TV screens. Fantastic look, really gives it a distinctive feel to the cabin, though it is exclusive to the GT line. The lower grades of the Sportage get a slightly different setup, and say the base model, the S, only gets an 8 inch infotainment touchscreen. Uh, something else I really like here the middle panel here, you press this button here, and you've got your climate controls coming up here, touch panel, but also physical rotary dials here, which we like because. It's just the best way for changing cabin temperature and fan controls when you're driving along the way. And I don't want that to come on because now you can't hear me talking. All right, be quiet. Okay, there we go. But if you press this button here, that then goes to your, your map, uh, navigation, 
change the tracks on the audio system, media setup, etc., etc. Climate controls over here. Something else that's exclusive to the GT line. This center console features a shift by wire rotary transmission dial. Looks very fancy, sophisticated. Your other Sportage models, they come with just a regular gear lever. Now that's something that's the same in the Cousin Tucson. Center console looks a lot cleaner in the GT line. Got room for more buttons. That includes your heating and ventilation for the front seats. That's standard on GT line. On the model down, the SX uh, Plus, that just gets heating for the front seats. And the seats, by the way, in this GT line are fantastic. Leather with a bit of suede, really comfortable, and add again to that, that plush upmarket feel. Saying that, quality, look, there's still a lot of hard plastics I would say in this, you know, the, just the upper dash section here is, is soft. Yeah, softer materials on the doors, but yeah, you know, if you're comparing it with a Mercedes or a BMW, it's still not quite in that territory. But look, overall, this is a really nice looking cabin. It's also reasonably practical too. You've got big cup holders here in the center console, and even a bit of a steal from Volkswagen here, because you press a button to flip out a grip for your, your coffee cup or, or bottle little tray area here for your odds and sods medium sized console bin that's quite handy door pockets not so good i've got a, a bottle here which is just a little bit of a squeeze to get into the pocket there so that's not ideal and also a little bit disappointing we've got a wireless charging tray in here but that's only standard on the gt line and not available at all on any other sportage not so good but look i don't want to end up on a down on this because overall this sportage cabin presents really well one of the other criticisms of the outgoing sportage rear seat room wasn't particularly generous not terrible just not particularly roomy but here we've got eight centimeters more space really noticeable few adults are going to complain about being in the back the bench is comfortable as well it's angled gives you some good support practical touches bottle holders in the doors still a bit squeezy like those up front we've got pouches map pockets in the back of the seat backs center armrest we've got ventilation so you don't get all hot and stuffy in the back uh, coat hooks on the back of the seat backs usb ports as well and you might think that they're to help plug into your tablet device which would slot into these big hooks here but apparently they are just coat hooks. Kia Australia is sticking with S, SX, SX Plus and GT line trim grades for the Sportage and all of them gained features over the corresponding outgoing models. The Sportage is now much better equipped from the off. Notable features for the base S include LED headlights and taillights, 17 inch machined alloy wheels, blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control and speed limit sign reading. There's also wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, where you have to plug in your phone for these interfaces on other grades. All Sportages also gain the front center airbag, first introduced on the Sorento, and designed to prevent the driver and front passenger from clashing heads in the event of a heavy side impact. Stepping up to the SX brings key items such as 18-inch wheels, a larger infotainment touchscreen with integrated navigation, dual zone climate control, electric lumbar adjustment for the driver's seat, one touch front windows and remote folding second row seats. The SX Plus, still sounding more like a sci-fi TV streaming service, tempts buyers with the likes of 19-inch alloy wheels, keyless entry and start, artificial leather seats with heating up front and electric adjustment for the driver, a Harman Kardon audio system, paddle shift levers and an auto gesture tailgate. We've already mentioned some of the features exclusive to the range topping GT line, but other highlights include leather suede seats with cooling function for the front seats, panoramic sunroof, LED interior lights, ambient mood lamp and alloy sports pedals. Two technology additions too, both borrowed from the Sorento, blind spot collision assist that provides a camera view inside the digital instrument cluster and remote parking assist, though this is available only on the diesel GT line. Last details to cover off for today, engines. So a bit of good and bad news here. The Sportage range will exactly mirror that of its cousin Tucson. So we are now going to get a 1.6 litre turbo petrol so that's good because we know that's a good engine and that's got 132 kilowatt, 265 newton meters linked with a seven speed dual clutch auto all wheel drive. 
There's also the two litre turbo diesel that carries over from the outgoing sport charge, 137 kilowatts, 460 newton meters with an eight speed torque converter auto and all wheel drive and that's available on all grades. The downside to the engine lineup, we've still got the two litre naturally aspirated petrol engine that carries over. Now that was a bit of a undernourished, underpowered engine even in the fourth generation Sportage. The fifth generation, it's heavier. We don't know the exact figures, but look, it's got more features. It's just bigger physically, it's gonna be heavier. So that's a little bit roaring, so we'll see. The two litre petrol that's available in the S, SX, SX Plus. The 1.6 litre turbo is in the SX Plus and the GT line only. And the diesel, that's all grades. One other slightly disappointing bit of news, the plug-in hybrid version of the Sportage, which is gonna be unveiled very shortly, that's not coming to Australia, at least for now. I reckon the Sportage's design alone could almost put the Frighteners on some of its rivals. We can't wait to find out if this new fifth generation Sportage is as good to drive as it is to look at. We hope you enjoyed our first look at the fifth generation Kia Sportage. And if you did enjoy this video, why not hit subscribe to keep up to date with all our latest videos.